And so I think being surrounded by good people, having the right mindset, and also not giving up and just having a goal to accomplish, those are all important factors that come into play. I don't know which is more important, but I think having all of those things put together and having a support system is huge. Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Hey everyone, welcome back to another inspiring episode of For the Love of Money. This episode is gonna blow your socks off. It's an incredibly emotional episode and it's an episode that is going to make you wanna run through a wall for whatever cause you care about. We're gonna sit down with decorated US Army Ranger, Mikhail Venikoff, and he is such an inspiring individual. The impact that he's creating is off the charts. Now, speaking of impact, the very reason that you are growing your business is so that you can have the wealth and the ability to create impact on causes that you care about. And I want to help you get to where you are meant to go. So whether that is in the form of my one-on-one coaching, which you can check out and apply for at fortheloveofmoney.com forward slash coaching, or if it's in the form of one of our VIP days, where my entire team becomes your entire team to move your business radically forward with brand new ideas for revenue and an entire list of what to do next and when to do it by. If you want to check those VIP days out, go to fortheloveofmoney.com forward slash VIP and you can apply there as well. No matter what capacity it's in, we have such a passion for helping you achieve your goals because we know that when good people make good money, they do great things. And that is exactly what you are destined to do. And that is what our guest, Mikhail Venikoff, is doing. So he's a decorated U.S. Army Ranger who was originally born in Kazakhstan. He's also an MMA fighter, SWAT team member, an all-around remarkable human being. He is leading by example the way that I and so many others want to show up in this world right now. So we have him on the show today because he truly is that inspiration of what happens when you play to your fullest ability, the incredible impact that you can create, the impact that you were meant to do when you were put here on this earth. He's the founder of Ranger Road, this incredible nonprofit that brings veterans and civilians together through extraordinary sports adventure experiences to help them with the difficult transition process back to civilian life. And difficult it is for many veterans. We have a tendency to not be educated sometimes on just how much they struggle when they come back after serving our country. And so his foundation provides opportunities for active duty and veterans to participate in awesome activities such as skydiving, wakeboarding, MMA training, etc., which really just provides the space, creates the container for them to gather, bond, and eventually open up about the help that they really need. Because as you're going to see as the show unfolds, he talks about it's not common for veterans to say, I need help. It's not normal for them to raise their hand when they need the help. So he's creating the space and the experience for that to happen. So I really, I want you to really listen up in this episode because together we paint the picture of why so many veterans are struggling, what they need and what we can do about it. You're going to love Mikhail's story about how he started the nonprofit, especially if you have one that you want to start your own. He did it with his own money. Yes, his own money when he received a windfall from an investment that he made. You know, he's literally living out our motto. When good people make good money, they do great things. He did great things with his money. And honestly, things get really emotional as Mikhail tells stories about, very specific stories about impact that his Ranger Road Foundation has created. 
And you're going to leave this episode exponentially more inspired to run through a wall for whatever cause you care about. So listen, let's get real. Let's listen up. Let's dial in because this episode represents everything about the way that we all want to show up in life. All right, Mikhail, I'm honored to have you on. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for being on the show. So I want to start by just giving you heartfelt thanks. Thanks for your service, not only as an Army Ranger, but as a SWAT team member and for the way that you're demonstrating greatness and impact by the example in the way of, of which you're leading your life. And, and really, that's what we're going to get into on this show today. So just wanted to start with a heartfelt thank you for all of that. Oh, well, thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate it. Of course. Now, we start this show with Rapid Fire. It's a fun way to help my listeners get to know you in a hurry. And if there's something really good that comes up that we want to circle back around and do a deep dive on, we'll do it. Are you in? Let's do it. All right, man. So where'd you grow up? I uh, grew up in Russia. And where do you live now? I currently live in California. And what's your favorite quote? Uh, Together, we are strong. What is one of your superpowers? <laughs> Uh, being able to eat what I want and burn it off. <laughs> Dude, I wish I had that one. Not <laughs> fair. Uh, what, what's one of your favorite books? Uh, you know what? I don't read much. I don't have a favorite book. And what is one thing you're challenged by right now? Uh, spreading wor- or knowledge about our veterans and uh, um, the help that they need. Oh man, we're going to do that today. I promise you that. A couple more. What is one of your all-time favorite accomplishments so far? So far, uh, actually, uh, the best ranger competition was uh, near the top. Very cool. And you won that, right? I did, yeah. That's a big deal. Congratulations. Thank you. And then what is something generous you've done recently? Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, Recently, uh, we're working with uh, numerous individuals, uh, veterans, and uh, we're working with a family that uh, a veteran just committed suicide. So we're trying to uh, put a care package together. They asked for raffle items to be able to um, assist uh, fundraising. Man, I am so grateful that you are showing up in the world and, and doing things like that. And last but not least, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for my wife and a uh, beautiful baby that she, uh, she and I have. Oh man, you and me both. Meaning I'm grateful yeah. for my wife, but I don't have a baby yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get a little bit deeper into the interview now, Mikhail. Um, you were born in Kazakhstan. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So I just want to paint the picture for everyone. You're born in Kazakhstan and you ended up a decorated army ranger, then a SWAT team member, now an MMA fighter, and best of all, the founder of Ranger Road, which is a foundation that we're going to talk a lot about later. It's freaking remarkable, the path that you've taken. So I kind of want to walk through your backstory one step at a time. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. So how did you arrive in the US from Kazakhstan? Uh, So we... Um, came to America in 89. Uh, my dad actually served in the Russian, uh, special forces. It was, it's called Spetsnaz. And, um, he he did his time there. Uh, and then, um, while, while we were living there in Russia at that time, there was a strict requirement to be a certain religion and that being Russian Orthodox. And, uh, my dad, uh, was Pentecostal. And so at that point, America had a, a way of getting veteran or I'm sorry, getting, uh, individuals out of Russia that were escaping religious prosecution. And so we were fortunate to be on that, in that position. Uh, we moved, uh, with the help of a sponsor from, from California. It was a church is called Capital Christian Center. Uh, they sponsored us and got us on a plane. We immigrated from Kazakhstan over to Rome. We lived in Rome for three months in a little tiny uh, apartment with another family uh, while our paperwork and documentation were getting finalized. And then once uh, once that was done, then we moved over to, to the U.S., and, uh, you know, in, in summary, that's kind of what happened. I'm, there's a lot of more, a lot more little details that, that came into play, but basically U S opened the doors to us and accepted us. And we had, you know, the, the privilege to come over and start a new life. Wow. Very cool. And what age were you at this time? I came here when I was almost eight. So seven, but almost eight, eight years old. So special forces runs in the family. When did you know that you <laughs> wanted to be an army ranger? 
you know, I, uh, I'll be honest, dude. Um, I had no idea what a ranger was. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've seen shows, movies and that sort of thing, but I've never uh, knew what a ranger was. Um, but when I came, I enlisted, when I enlisted into the military, I just had a regular infantry contract, no airborne or anything like that. And while I was in basic training, I stood out physically. And also I had, you know, I had on my shoulder, I guess I was a little bit, um, mature at that time than maybe some of the uh the other joes i was with and so i stood out i had numerous leadership awards and physical awards that i that i um i just excelled uh, while in basic and so they offered me airborne school while in airborne school i uh, did well and a uh, couple of cool looking guys with uh, tan berets came over and said hey we're rangers and uh we have slots anybody want to volunteer? And so I've, that's when I found out what Ranger Battalion was. And then I, I had the opportunity to go through RIP, which was a Ranger indoctrination program, and then get into Ranger Battalion. Man, that's so cool. And just in case any listeners don't know, describe for us the uh, elite Rangers. What are they? So the Ranger Battalion, there's three battalions, first, second, and third. It's a special ops unit within within the Army. And uh, Airborne Rangers, we, we um, work closely within within a small units and we deploy where when where and when necessary uh we do small rotations from first second and third battalion and and we address issues that the regular army does not get involved in yeah they're not equipped for so what's the best lesson you learned as an as a ranger man you know teamwork teamwork is a big thing uh brotherhood uh being able to uh rely on your your battle buddy that's that's i think that would be the one that i would choose just being able to work together trust each other and uh rely on one another so how did you make the transition from active duty to civilian life so well and this is where we're going to start to steer the conversation a little bit towards some of the struggles that individuals have you seem to have thrived you know at least outside looking in how did you make that transition so well yeah, you know, I I um, didn't really realize the difficulty that a lot of veterans had or have continue having as they're transitioning out of the military. Uh, the reason being is because I I guess what what I learned after you know kind of sitting back and watching or or uh, going over my my experiences coming out of the military is always difficult. The reason being is depending on how long you served and what your experiences are. Um, if you've been in, in combat and have you, have you lost any friends while, while in combat, you know, all those things come into play, but the transition period is crucial, uh, to have, uh, something set up and be able to, uh, have a support system and whether that be your, you know, your wife, your, your friends and have a goal to uh, get into work, school or something right away. So when I came out of the military, I literally... I literally came out of the military and um, uh, some of my buddies who I was cl close with, they were going to a fight the next day. So I went to a fight with them. It was an MMA fight out in Sacramento. Team Alpha Male, Uriah Faber was fighting. I saw what was going on. I liked it. I was introduced to him that day. The next day I go into the gym, we start training. And so that transition for me happened so fast that I didn't have time to sit back and feel sorry for myself or get pissed off or, at the system or the VA or whatever was going on. And so I think being surrounded by good people, having the right mindset and also not giving up and just having a goal to accomplish, those are all important factors that come into play. I don't know which is more important, but I think having all of those things put together and having a support system is huge. Oh man, Mikhail, this is really good stuff. This is the kind of stuff that we need to be educated on. So I see and hear so many stories of struggle when soldiers come home from active duty. And I know that financial opportunities, you know, here you are saying, as long as somebody can have the opportunity to get involved in something right away, I know that financial opportunities are not what they need to be for soldiers that come home. So in your opinion, how can we work to improve this? You know, it's, it's one of those things, it's kind of trial by error, I think. Uh, within Ranger Battalion, there's that camaraderie that's very important and, and the support system. Uh, and so that's what we do within uh, Ranger Road. Uh, we're not doctors. We're not, you know, highly educated individuals, but we're all uh, veterans and we're all volunteers. And so when 
I'll take, take me for example, if somebody comes up to me and tells me, Hey man, or uh, there's a presentation, they say, Hey, who needs help? Most of guys that I served with, including myself, we're not going to raise our hand and, and say, Hey, I need help. It's kind of a, a pride issue and, and other things come into play. But with, with what we're doing with Ranger Road, we learned that if we just put fun events together, um, whether it be skydiving, scuba diving, just regular think type of things put uh, in a in a relaxed environment, we get a lot more feedback, a lot more veterans and their families come out, or even their families, and then they they pull their veterans, you know, uh, loved ones to the events, and then they get to just hang out, have a good time, meet people uh, organically, and then you know there's there's those that do stand out, and we single them out and we assist them, find out what's what they need, what kind of uh, concerns they have, whether it be you know, marital situations or, or job uh, problems or whatever the case may be. And then we assist them uh, individually. But most of us, we just need to get going and and meet individuals at these events that we put together and help understand that there's a lot of people in America that care for our veterans and want to help. They just don't know how. Oh man, that is so true. Like, I, let's just use myself for example. I really care a lot about this subject and I really want to help and make impact. I don't necessarily know how until I have conversations like this with you. So Ranger Road, you're creating the space for these individuals to show up in a non-intimidating, matter of fact, very inviting way so that they can at least be around other people that might have the same struggles, the same concerns, so that those conversations can maybe start to happen. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We also try to bridge the gap. Civilians and veterans, um, veterans have a certain mindset. Civilians have a different mindset. And sometimes, you know, they butt heads. So we try to avoid that. And so some of the events that we do, for example, Operation Gut Check, we invite disabled veterans to participate in a Spartan race. And then we take those disabled veterans and put them on a team with other civilians that want to participate. And going through you know, mud and, and hard obstacles together, working together, they kind of forget the whole, hey, I'm a civilian, I'm a veteran, whatever the case may be. And they work together for a common goal. And then that that helps bridge that gap to be able to understand and just talk to each other. And usually during these events, people that have problems or issues at home, they open them uh, open up to individuals and talk about them. Uh, maybe not exactly at the event, but afterwards, and they in, they're introduced to individuals that have you know businesses and are able to hire them and and assist them and push them in the right direction and and kind of give them a um, another purpose. Oh man, so brilliant! Okay, I freaking love this. When did you start Ranger Road? So Ranger Road, uh, we. Um, Beginning of 2015, we received our 501c3 uh, documentation. By the way, what you're doing is an example of what this show promotes. And that is when people live to their absolute fullest potential, which you have obviously clearly done, then that's when you can make the greatest impact, which is what you're doing by starting this foundation and growing it. So it started in 2015. That's actually not very long ago. You guys are already kicking butt with this thing. Where does the funding come from? So, um, yeah, I'll... I'll explain all of that. Uh, so 2015 is we're, we're essentially a baby. And when we started, the idea was, you know, I was still fighting actively and uh, didn't have too much time. The idea was just a lot of vets. Uh, so when I won the best ranger competition, I was on TV and uh, a lot of individuals knew this crazy Russian guy who's a ranger that was uh, <laughs> f- physically crazy, you know, <laughs> in a good way. And so I had a lot of exposure and I was a young, young, young guy when I won it. And so, you know, TV and all that other stuff and my MMA fights. So a lot of veterans, whether they served with me or guys that didn't serve with me, heard about me, would email me, message me and call me, ask, hey, man, it looks like you're doing great. Uh, your transition out of the military was great. You got a job. You're doing a lot of great things. I'm having a hard time. What are you doing differently than us or me, you know? And I didn't really realize any of that. It didn't sink in until I uh, I got hurt. I um, had surgery uh, on my elbow during you know the incident that happened. No big deal. So I had some downtime and started thinking about that and going over the emails. And I was like, man, what what helped me? You know, what what helped me with that transition? And like we mentioned, being around good people and staying active 
was beneficial for me. And I'm also good at organizing and, and uh, getting guys motivated to do things. So that's kind of essentially how Range Road was born. And we, um, we've we been extremely busy. We try to do maybe three or four events a year. The first year we had 20 events. And so it just keeps growing and word of mouth spreads. And um, a lot of veterans are actually benefiting and, and receiving assistance through our programs and events. And so they're telling their vet, their vet buddies and family members. And so literally from to 2015 to now, it's just been an uphill. Um, we just took off and uh, been, been very successful, which we're, we're uh, fortunate, but also with with success comes other, you know, issues or, or obstacles, if I can put it that way, which is funding. Funding, for the most part, um, I put a lot of my uh, personal money into Ranger Road because I'm a firm believer in making things work and then good people will see what we're doing and then jump on board to help out. Um, I've spoken with uh, other people big nonprofits who have tried to educate me on how that's wrong. <laughs> they tell me, they tell me, Hey man, you're supposed to, here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do fundraising for like, I don't know, six, seven months and raise say a hundred, 200 grand or whatever. And then with that, with that fund, those funds, you develop a game plan, how you can use the money. Well, I like that, that, that makes sense. But I was uh, fortunate to, I had a house, uh, I sold it. And I, I, I made some good money on it. So I invested a good chunk of that into Ranger Road. So we started with um, right away with putting events together, uh, getting getting vets flown into wherever where the events are and getting it going. I like to um, show people what we're doing. You know, the, there's a, a term or basically if I, I like to show people versus tell them. So we, we put these events together and get people involved and they see what they're doing, what we're doing and how it benefits people or veterans and they jump on board and assist us. So funding wise, we're not where we would like to be, but uh, the community comes together and, and uh, I've spoken with some, you know, uh, developers in the area, in the California area who have jumped on board and assist, uh, assisted us through uh, tax deductible donations. Man, that is awesome. I love that you seeded this thing with your own financial windfall to begin with. You know, this show has the tagline, when good people make good money, they do great things. That's exactly what you lived out in that scenario when you put your own money in to get this thing going and get the momentum behind it. And you're right, once you have the momentum to show, it makes it a little bit easier to start raising uh, funding, but funding is always a challenge. Is this the biggest challenge that Ranger Road faces right now? Oh, it's the, it's, it's, yeah, it is, yes. <laughs> Do you have any it funding is. goals you can share with us or? Yeah, we uh, we put together um, sponsor packages for individuals that are interested in participating and, and sponsoring our, our veterans. Uh, what we like to, you know, we're proud of is we're all volunteers, including myself and, and my wife's on, on our board. And uh, we have zero paid staff. So 100% of what goes into Ranger Road goes back to supporting our, our veterans through these events that we put together. And so um, sometimes... You know, financial assistance is huge and it's, it's necessary, but sometimes big companies like we have a MMA organization, Professional Fight League, they give us 10 cage side fights or seats every year uh, or every fight. And so we we fly disabled veterans out there and have them give them the opportunity to enjoy the fight. So whether it be financial assistance or uh, product assistance that uh, corporations provide us with that we can raffle off and raise money to continue doing what we're doing is, is, you know, it, it, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. It all counts. What role has generosity played in your success? Has there been a, a donor or an event that really stands out to you that's helped you guys out? Yeah. I, I, I think, yes, there's numerous, uh, big donors. Uh, there's a gentleman, his name is Michael Diepenbrock. He's out of California. He's a, um, uh, he's not a veteran, but he uh, comes from a veteran family. And so he uh, funds our project moving forward uh, event. And what that is, is uh, we go out to military hospitals such as Walter Reed and other hospitals. And we go out there once a month and put these MMA workout types uh, events together, get get the the wounded vets out of the hospital environment and kind of active and, and, and working out and, and trying to uh, enjoy life a little bit. But aside from Michael, there's a lot of other individuals, even, you know, five, 10 bucks 
that people are donating goes a long way because we we definitely stretch our dollar. Last year, our budget, uh, we well, we spent uh, just under two hundred thousand dollars. And when I tell other huge nonprofits, you know, we talk about these numbers and they're like, oh my god, that's that's like that's chump change. But to us, that's that's a lot of money. You know, two hundred thousand dollars. We can we were able to last year one event alone, the Freedom Jump. We had over a thousand uh, veterans and their their loved ones. And uh, um, that's our biggest event that we put together. We have uh, tanks crushing cars. We have uh, MPT disabled veterans, paralyzed veterans, skydiving, you know, uh, American flag jump, national anthem, food, r- raffles. It's it's a big event that we do out in uh, Davis, California. And we, we usually try to sponsor, uh, div- uh, bring in some funding to be able to sponsor up to 50 disabled veterans who we're flying in from all over America. And then the community comes together and supports those individuals by by being there and and uh, donating or buying products uh, such as shirts and hats that we we have at the event. Man, you need to know how inspired I am right now. I love this. Can you share a favorite story from your foundation? Maybe it's an individual having a breakthrough or an impact that you made on somebody. Is there something that stands out that would not have happened without this foundation that you've started? Yeah, man, we have, uh, we try to do actually, uh, we highlight uh, one veteran a year for, and we do a video, kind of a a story on him for Veterans Day, and they're all on on YouTube. But one gentleman, his name is Jordan Stevenson. He is a, um, he's a good friend of mine. And, uh, sorry, I'm getting all weird. (laughs) Um, It's okay. Yeah. So he uh, was an EOD uh, that was his MOS. and uh, he, after going through the, through all the training, he was assigned to, I believe it was uh, third bat, third, third ranger bat or first ranger bat. I can't remember, but uh, he, he deployed and then um, first, first deployment out, he got shot. He got shot in the head. Mm. And uh, fortunately, I don't know how it worked out, but he, when he got shot, he was able to return fire and he actually was able to uh, tag the guy that shot him. So his story was they didn't think he was going to make it. He took a round right through right, right through the head and um, uh, medevaced, obviously, and pushed through. And long story short, he uh, there was a medic on scene who treated him. He was a, a third, third ranger bat guy, a medic, and uh, basically um, saved his life. He was at the hospital um, for you know a long time, and um, because of being shot in the head, his whole right side of his body is paralyzed, oh. and they had to amputate his right leg. Good, good guy, young guy, just, um, just you know, that's just part of war. And so uh, he rehabbed. He had a hard, hard time. His wife left him. She had some crazy story about. Uh, about him and, and not wanting to be with him. So that, that was unfortunate. Mm. Um, but to make, you know, things brighter, he remarried. He has um, children with his new wife, Sarah. Good good family, good guy. And uh, he got involved with Ranger Road, uh, skydiving and doing other things. And so one of his, uh, one of the things he enjoys doing is hunting and driving cars. So we started a program, it's called Ranger Road Motors. And we, we have a, a race car which is outfitted with hand controls. And so he's the face behind Ranger Road Motors. He races cars. Uh, he brings in other veterans, uh, other paralyzed or amputee veterans, and they make a team and they're, they're, they do these races. It's two-day races called the uh, le- uh, 24 Hours of Lemons. And then uh, to make it, you know, to hit it home, uh, the hunting portion, my first sergeant uh, at that time, he, he retired as a sergeant major, is Tom Fuller. He has a, a company, Armageddon Gear, out in Georgia. And so he he called me one day. He's like, hey, man, um, with Ranger Road, I'd like to sponsor some hunts. And so uh, basically we bring out veterans to Georgia. And uh, there's a there's a farm there. We take the vets, uh, sit them in, um, in stands, and they shoot pigs and shoot quail and uh, have a good time. So one of the times when we're going up there, I took Jordan with me and uh, we're driving or we're flying actually there. <laughs> and he said, Hey man, um, there's this guy is a medic, third ranger battalion guy. He, uh, so he's like, Hey, uh, he's, he saved my life. Uh, you know, he, he gave me his name. I'm like, I, I don't know what I know a lot of guys <laughs> and they know me. So, uh, 
I put it on social media. I, I, locate, I located him. He's actually, at that time, he was uh, still in, uh, in, in 3rd Battalion. So I got to talk to him. I told him the story. He's like, yeah, yeah, I remember Jordan. I, uh, I did X, Y, and Z to him. He got, got shot, and uh, I was the medic that treated him. And so uh, dur- during the hunt, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we do is uh, we uh, sit around the fire and just chat, you know? Mm-hmm. And so uh, the medic came, and... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, long story short, uh, the met the medic came and he got all awkward because <laughs> uh, Jordan Jordan uh, never seen him before. Wow. He just uh, seen him on uh, on Facebook and stuff. And so, um, uh, long story short, it was again awkward. Uh, a bunch of dudes drinking beer and <laughs> doing man stuff. <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, this guy the the medic comes and Jordan uh, they get up and hug and just. Uh, just start talking and just uh, reminiscing on, you know, what had happened. And this was uh, <clears throat> Jordan's uh, first experience of hearing from, uh, from from the medic that treated him of uh, <clears throat> what happened to him, you know. And so, uh, again, I'm not a good storyteller. <laughs> You're doing great, man. But. It, it was really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was recording then. And then when, when it all got weird and mushy, I turned, turned off the recorder because some of the stuff, uh, I have to have permission from them to record. Obviously, later, Jordan was like, oh, my God, dude, you should have continued recording. And, <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm not going to say, hey, uh, you guys, uh, stop hugging. Can I, can I keep recording you guys? <laughs> you know, so uh, in essence... Um, that was that was you know kind of a um, snap to reality. Just kind of shows that sometimes uh, little little things go a long way. And um, hanging out and um, p- putting these events together um, brings people together and and gives you a sense of um, therapy. For me, you know, I have all my limbs. I do have my disabilities, but all my limbs. I I was fortunate to come back, and. Uh, my career was was phenomenal in the military. I, I I had a great time, but not everybody was as fortunate as I, I was. You know, uh, two two of my good friends that we served with, uh, Sergeant uh, Brem and Barraza, they were they were uh, killed in action. The when I was when we were deployed, our last deployment or my last deployment, I I got sent back to do to compete in the range, uh, best ranger competition, and they didn't make it back. So you know, seeing seeing all that and wives and girlfriends crying and uh, you you can't uh you can't really do anything about it you know so uh yeah so it's a it's a therapy for um myself too just uh be be part of um <clears throat> a good group of guys and uh hang out and, and uh um help each other out that's all Mikhail, i think we can all literally feel the importance of this organization ranger road that you put together i mean that that moment of the story that you told uh, during the hunt, the purpose that you're giving yourself and the other people that get to volunteer, every single piece of it is providing so much impact and, and literally saving lives that wouldn't be saved otherwise. And I think we can all really feel the impact that you're having. And it's incredible. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so what is the best way for us to help the foundation, everyone who's listening, um, what is the best way for us to help you have impact? Well, um, just you know, I think we're we've been pretty good at spreading the word about what we're doing. We're on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, all over social media, and we've actually been re, uh, shoulder tapped uh, by numerous. Uh, big hospitals, military hospitals, asking us to put our programs into into their hospitals, um, our scuba program. And all of our programs, let me back up a little bit, are run by disabled veterans. We have a scuba program where we have a double amputee Marine who uh, uh, also, they're all great, great people and good friends of mine. And they, um, they're, they're just passionate about different things. And so that's why we, we branch out and make all these programs possible. And each one is run by a disabled veteran. And so we're going to c- 
continue doing what we're doing, whether we get support or not. But financial assistance is huge. You know, we just we just uh, found out for the Freedom Jump we need to pay, you know, say 13 grand for insurance. <laughs> you know that I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because 13 grand I could do a lot with um, the events and helping our veterans. But it's a necessity that we have to pay because they won't let us skydive of the vets without insurance. So just, you know, there's there's certain things that we have to pay and, and get get done in order to assist our veterans. And so we're always seeking financial assistance. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So um, all the donations that do come in uh, are tax deductible. We are also seeking uh, volunteers and our our events vary from California to Washington, D.C. We're in New York. We're in Texas. We do events in all various parts of, of America. And so we need volunteers, uh, guys that are, can help us with our website, our um, yeah, social media, and uh, responding to uh, veterans that are that are signing up. And, you know, the list goes on. We are also seeking an individual that can help us with grant writing because although we're eligible for a lot of uh, phenomenal grants out there. We don't have any grants as of right now because grant writers are pretty expensive. <laughs> so we try to uh, 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 bring in volunteers to assist us in, in what we're doing. And um, I think that one of the bigger things is just spreading the word about uh, Ranger Road and uh, uh, educating the community on what we're doing. Uh, we were just in, um, on uh, the Jay Leno show. He heard about what we were doing and uh, invited some of our uh, uh, amputee veterans to uh, show his show him our race car. So we'll be featured on uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Um, I probably love that next, show. Yeah, yeah. And he's a, he's a phenomenal guy. He's just a stand-up guy and loves veterans. So he's trying to promote what we're doing as well. And then we were at the White House um, last uh, two weeks ago, um, when uh, Trump was speaking about the veteran community and and the uh, the honor ride, and, and so we're we're definitely you know pushing or making steps in the right direction, and we're um, receiving a overwhelming amount of requests from the veteran community to participate. But we can only assist a handful of individuals based on our budget. So financial assistance is one of the biggest is is the biggest um, hurdle that we're uh, faced. Okay, so I've got a remarkable group of listeners. Like you have no idea how awesome these individuals are and, and the action that they take. So I want to be really clear on where they can go for each one of these needs. So let's start with the financial assistance and we'll put links to all this in the show notes. But where do they go to donate? So our website is www.rangerroad.org and rangerroad is one word dot org on there we have a um, a donate a donate tab uh, whether you want to donate that way we actually uh, try to avoid that and and maybe uh, if they want to call me or email me directly uh, and the reason being is when we go through the donate tab paypal charges us a fee so and again we we try to stretch the dollar as best we can and and avoid any kind of fees um, that we can. So website has has the link. Also, they can contact me directly on my email address. I can provide that uh, to you for a link if that's... Yeah, uh, what is it? If, so it's Mikhail, M-I-K-H-A-I-L at rangerroad.org. And I'll repeat that one more time. M-I-K-H-A-I-L at rangerroad.org. If it's simpler for uh, individuals to donate through the website, then uh, that they're more than uh, welcome to it. Again, they, they just charge a, a fee to to do that. All right. So we're going to put a link to the website. One more time, that link is? rangerroad.org. And then your email one more time if they want to uh, donate directly is? Mikhail, M-I-K-H-A-I-L at rangerroad.org. And then the last request I have of, of all the listeners is if you can provide website assistance, social media assistance, grant writing assistance, because all of my listeners are mostly entrepreneurs, they're really good at this stuff. So it's the perfect audience. Um, if you want to help Mikhail and the Ranger Road Foundation with this, how where did they go to apply to help with these things? So same thing, if they go to the website, um, there's a uh, tab that says get involved. 
and that'll list all the programs and events that we have from scuba diving, skydiving, mountain biking, MMA training, um, cage fights, you name it, we have it all on there. And if individuals are interested in participating in those events, they are more than welcome to. Obviously, we try to sponsor the disabled veterans and assist them financially, but if you want to um, also skydive or scuba dive with them, you're more than welcome to. It's just uh, we will not be able to, uh, it won't be for free. Yeah, I hear you. All right, calling on all listeners to step up, whether it's through your service or, or through your donations. Mikhail, man, I cannot thank you enough for I- you know leading and showing up the way you are in life. I can't thank you enough for demonstrating how we should all act in our greatness and then make the impact that comes from being able to do that, whether we're able to donate money, whether we're able to donate services, whether we're able to support a foundation or start our own, but one that we care care about. You in the past 40 minutes here, I guarantee have inspired the shit out of so many (laughs) individuals and I can't thank you enough. Well, no, thank you for uh, <laughs> making me sound like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'll tell you what, it's good to have those moments and, and you're providing those moments for other people too, just like the story around the campfire. So, all right. Well, listen, everyone who's listening to this episode, please make sure you do an outstanding job of supporting Ranger Road and supporting Mikhail's efforts because it can't continue on necessarily in the way that it is without all of you. And Mikhail, I just want to leave with this. The show's tagline is when good people make good money, they do great things. And that is exactly what you have done, both with your notoriety and with the windfall that you had created in order to create Ranger Road. Way to go, man. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.